Writing is powered by many things, and for me, one of the major ones is tea. This is an awesome mug my mom found me. Keep calm and make tea. Um, I drink tea constantly when I'm um, writing, whether it's hot tea or iced tea um, in Texas. That's iced tea a lot of the time, though even in the middle of... Um, summer I have been known to make myself tea. In fact, um, I, I visit, was visiting a dear friend of mine and she introduced me to something and I called home and I was like, I have found what I need. It is an electric teapot. This has a little base it snaps onto and it heats up the water so I don't have to leave my room and I have a cup of tea because I do dearly love living with my large family but when one leaves your room to go get a cup of tea it usually takes about half an hour to get back even though our house is fairly small simply because people will stop and ask you how's the writing going what are you working on oh is it that scene already and um which is great that I have a built-in fan club but <laughs> it uh, slows down the writing process um and for certain books are powered by certain teas. Um, this is one of my favorites. Uh, I use it when I'm having trouble concentrating. Um, but it also powered the next book we're talking about. This is a very special blend of tea. Um, a very dear friend of mine and fellow writer. Some of you may have read her books. If you have not, go out and grab a copy. Um, Elizabeth Allen. Um, she wrote some of my favorites. In fact, I have them tucked in here. Um, she wrote The Abolitionists. Um, this is one of her books. G a gorgeous cover and a very, very good book. So she was, when I was writing the book that we're discussing today, um, she sent me British tea. Um, which is actually a little ironic considering a different kind of courage. Uh, one of the themes is how I'm against English tea, the American side, but at the same time, uh, it was a great thing to um, be drinking. A different kind of courage um, is my my mother uh, teased that it was my excuse to do school again. Um, I was always I, I loved history um, ever since I was younger. I mean, I, I obviously the Middle Ages fascinated me. In fact. Um, for almost two years, I studied the Middle Ages exclusively. Um, but uh, I, I loved American history. Um, I really liked a bunch of different time periods. And um, one of the characters that uh, fascinated me um, in this movie we had by Disney, um, the movie being Johnny Tremaine, was Dr. Joseph Warren. Uh, I thought he was, I, I just loved his character. Uh, he intrigued me when I was younger. Um, but I, I went to research when I was younger and I could not find anything about it. It was frustrating. This I, I found this book when I was around 20 and it um, mentioned Dr. Joseph Warren and it actually had some source material and I was really excited. Um, I actually read the source material and found out that the book that I had that had read Spark My Imagination got a lot of things wrong um, which frustrated me but um, I, I was really excited. I started doing some searching again and I found this very fascinating man who um, was forgotten by a lot of history but um, it, it was a just a driving force in the early American Revolution. Uh, a fair, one of the more level-headed <laughs> driving forces, um, especially in Boston. And I, I was just became uh, one, just fascinated by the whole period. I started reading a lot. I knew that um, I wanted. I started deciding I really wanted to write a book where Joseph Warren played um, heavily a heavy role. And um, I just started doing a lot of research. And around the same time, I was also doing re I was also watching a lot of movies with people with secret identities. And um, while it's a very fascinating concept, um, I will be the first to admit um, Zorro uh, movies are some of my favorites. Uh, if you're looking for a good one, 
the series made in the 1990s was fantastic. It's a TV series made for kids, but really awesome. But anyway, but one of the things that these series really don't show is the consequence of somebody constantly lying. Um, while it may be for good cause, it is lying. And, um, it, and those lies tangle up and they will have de be detrimental to some relationships because as several people have said, um, I heard it, this particular quote first from John Lynch, um, if you wear a mask, only the mask gets loved. Um, and, um, this came at a time when God was really ripping away, um, some of the layers, masks I had put on because, um, most, I didn't like people seeing the real me. I, I wanted them, um, I, I can, I'm a half decent actor. I, I know the different games people play. I like to call m the most common one being the how are you? I am fine game that a lot of people play. You, you ask me how I'm doing. I respond how I'm fine no matter what. And um, while I've never been good at that particular game, I, I always usually told people how I was doing. Um, I When people would ask deeper questions, I'd use give them surface answers because Sometimes what was going on inside isn't very pretty, and um, I think one of the th consequences, though, um, was I was kind of lonely, but it was of my own making sometimes. Um, so, hence emerged this book. William struggling with not only the revolution, um, he's being pulled between his father, who's a loyalist, and Dr. Joseph Warren, who we would call patriot at that time, um, it was actually, you could consider, patriotism was considered being loyal to the king, so um, they would be called Whigs or troublemakers, <laughs> according to who you asked. Um, but um, he's also being pulled because he has secrets, a lot of secrets in his past. And he's, but he wants to be what a lot of us want to. He wants to be loved and accepted. And that tension. Um, I put a lot of research into this book. Um, I, I have this huge list of people and resources, in fact, and I even did a blog, um, a different kind of courage blogspot.com, so that people could find out the, both the history, the fact and the fiction, um, what's fact and what's fiction um, about the book. I even had a dear friend in England who, uh, again, Elizabeth Allen, who helped me figure out um, what the English people thought at the time about the whole mess. Um, she, there was a character in here called Mark Layton, who is this um, British officer. Um, she gave me so much information that helped me write that character. Um, of course, my favorite character in this is Sayla. Sayla is just this fireball. Um, but <laughs> the fire gets in her way. But she's kind of intrigued by William, even though she irritates her. Um, and William's kind of inter gets interested in her. But it, she also irritates him. Um, before you worry, while there is a romance, <laughs> it's not a uh, very mushy one. Um, a little bit of violence, a couple, a gunshot wound or two, but, um, this one is definitely, I would say, um, best for readers 15 and up. My favorite quote in here is one that, um, several people really liked, but it's one actually that, um, I came up with long before the book, uh, started. My favorite quote in this, um, actually I have it right here up on my wall, um, was one that I came up with um, long before the book started. Um, it's one that I, I, I just one time got this inspiration, wrote it down, um, because um, of some things I was going through. Um, I went through a time where I was really struggling with some doubt, um, some depression, and um, I, the, the, you get it to a point, um, those of you who've gone through times like this know it. 
um, that sometimes it just it just feels like it's never gonna end. And I truly believe um, these words the may um, were ones inspired by God for me. So um, it's there is a light that it can only be found on the other side of darkness. There is a peace that can only be found on the other side of struggle. There is a faith that can only be found on the other side of doubt. And there's a healing that can only be found on the other side of pain. Um, these words were something that deeply impacted me and were ones that um, really gave me a lot of um, personal help. Um, because I think sometimes we, especially those of us who hang around our parents or um, very people who are very strong in their faith, the elderly people, sometimes we think that, well, they never doubted, they never... Um, questioned and um, one of the things I find interesting if you look over and over again in the Bible people doubted they questioned um, way those of us who struggle with that are in some of the greatest company just read you open up your Bible um, look at the Psalms if nothing else I mean even David struggled with it and he's a man after God's own heart um, there there are just some incredible things in there. Just they, we are not alone um, in that, but that I think that my faith became stronger through that. And I think in different kind of courage, William has struggles with a lot of stuff. It's not fun. It wasn't easy. But at the end of it, while there wasn't an easy solution that fixed everything, he came out stronger in the end. And. Um, I hope you learned some about history because I definitely had fun learning. Um, one of you, some of you might be in, wondering what these yellow tabs and do I normally put them in? Uh, these are tabs. Um, um, these have a very special purpose. They're marking spaces and um, sections that highlight people, characters, and stuff I've already developed because the sequel is forthcoming. The hope is is that. Um, uh, this November, and I'm recording this in 2016, that for Nano, I will write the sequel, and it should be out sometime in 2017.